So I, I lucked into some of these cheap uh, sheet metal planters. One of my neighbors was about to throw these away because some of these were damaged. And my little monkey brain immediately went to, hey, this looks like a Sculpt Nouveau project. So here we are. So in this video, we're going to walk through the steps of how to take a piece like this and put a, a metal coating and a patina on this. So first things first, and some of these steps I'm not going to show in excruciating detail, uh, but first thing we have to do to a piece like this is prime this so that it will take the metal coatings. Now, a lot of surfaces like this, this is already painted sheet metal. It would probably take the metal coating just fine, but the downside to painting the metal coating right on top of this is because it's white, it's probably going to take us more metal coating than we'd like to use to hide that white. And then also, if for some reason that uh, metal coating scratches off, then we don't want to expose this white surface underneath that makes it very clear that it's not copper because that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put oxidized copper on this surface. But quick uh, for recap, for those of you unfamiliar with this process, we're going to put a primer on this to, to prepare the surface. And you could do this to any paintable surface. And by that, I mean anything free of oil and dirt or anything that's going to keep the paint from sticking. And the metal coatings are an acrylic base. So ideally a rigid surface like a uh, wood, plastic, anything. Uh, sometimes some plastic surfaces you may need to lightly sand. But uh, any kind of surface like that that's free of any oils that would keep that from sticking. But once this is primed, we're ready to apply the metal coating. And in this case, we're going to be using the copper B. And the copper B uh, by itself will just give a copper finish. Uh, but we're going to use that to oxidize that because that copper B contains real copper. So we're going to use that to create a uh, copper patina. And by that, I mean, we're going to put that on and oxidize the metal powder in that metal coating. So since that does contain real copper powder, while the copper B metal coating is wet, and you'll see this here later on, while that's wet, it will respond much the way copper does uh, to a torch patina. So uh, while that's wet, we're going to spray on our patina and we're gonna get, I'm shooting for kind of a turquoise uh, blue, uh, kind of a greenish blue kind of look on this. Um, so anyway, without further ado, we're going to uh, primer this and so I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead now we have this is our uh, prime piece now I didn't take the primer all the way down into the planter because there's no reason to once this is full of soil you're only gonna see down into it a little bit but I just mainly wanted it to not look like white sheet metal if you look down into this at an angle so again that is using the prime it primer from Sculpt Nouveau and this is a water-based primer so low VOC or no VOC and you don't have to worry about ventilation or anything if you're applying this by brush or roller. So this particular uh, piece I primed using a roller just a, a cheap foam roller and the reason I went with that was I didn't want any brush strokes and sometimes those, some of those cheaper chip brushes will leave uh, little brush hairs in it. So uh, I prefer a roller for something like this just to make sure I get a nice finish and don't have to worry about picking brush hairs out. If you use a nice brush, that's typically not an issue. But now that this is primed, we're ready to apply our metal coating. Now, really important, when we're applying our metal coating, you want to make sure that you're ready to apply it and apply the patina. Because if you put this on, put the metal coating on and allow it to completely dry, your patina will not react with it because that acrylic will seal in that metal powder and you won't get any kind of reaction. So real important that you're ready to apply your metal coating and then apply the patina. And you'll see those steps here in a minute, but we wanna make sure that we've got everything ready to go uh, to get that going. And we're gonna do two coats of the metal coating. One is more of a base coat just to give complete coverage. And then our second coat while that's wet, that's where we'll apply our, where we'll apply our patina. Okay, here's our, I've got my foam roller ready to go. And I've got my copper B metal coating. And again, important to remember that this is 
real copper powder in an acrylic base. So make sure you shake this up really good. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with uh, just putting on just straight acrylic with no metal powder in there. So make sure you shake that up really good to get that metal suspended. an idea of what you're looking at as far as color and again in this instance we're using the the copper B as really uh, more of a jumping off point to create our patina so we're giving our our uh, patina something to oxidize Now, if you don't want to use a roller for this, you can also do this even with a cheap chip brush. If you followed some of our videos before where we've done similar finishes, uh, sometimes if I'm in a rush and that's all I've got, the chip brushes will work great, but just watch out for brush hairs transferring into the metal coating. And also what I usually do with a, a chip brush is I'll brush it on all over and then I'll go back and stipple out the brush strokes and that's a good way to still get a nice finished and you, you get that stippling gets you a really nice textured surface with more surface area so that your patina reacts really well with that. But I saw these foam rollers and I thought this might give a really nice finish. So I'm going to find out. Now, one of the things that's real important to get a good reaction is humidity. And in right now, unfortunately, it's the beginning of fall and things are starting to dry out and we don't have a whole lot of humidity, but that's what will ultimately drive the reaction when you put on your patina. So be aware of that. If you're in a really dry climate, sometimes you even have to introduce humidity with a humidifier, but be aware of that, that the upside to being in a dry climate is everything dries faster like your metal coating. The downside is the patina requires oxygen and that moisture in the air to, uh, to oxidize. So uh, if you run into that situation, some of our customers out in Arizona and Utah where it's really dry, sometimes they'll actually run a humidifier to get a reaction because you've got to have that uh, a, a little bit of humidity to get that reaction to happen. Okay, so we've got that. I'm just gonna hit the top here. Now, the, uh, some of these areas, it does help to have a brush, but I'm gonna try to do as much as I can with a roller just to minimize mess here. Okay, and now ready for that to dry. And again, fairly dry today, so this should go pretty quick. Should get a pretty fast dry on this. And then we'll be ready to proceed with our second coat. And that's the one that's critical. That's the coat that when we put that on, we wanna be prepared to have our patinas ready to go and put those on as soon as we apply that. Because if it sits too long, it's gonna seal in that metal and we're not gonna get a reaction. So we're gonna let that sit. And this is one of the questions I get a lot about metal coatings and some of the other Sculpt Nouveau products that are air drying is how long does it take stuff to dry? Well, that's dependent on a lot of things. It's unlike a lot of our uh, AB plastics and things like that that we sell that catalyze in a very precise amount of time. Uh, air dry materials, you're, you're at the mercy of the ambient humidity and the temperature where you're working. So if you are in a really hot, dry climate, obviously everything's gonna dry faster. If you're cold, damp, it's gonna dry slower. And also just how thick you apply this. We put on a fairly thin layer of this, so, so this should dry fairly quick. I would say for where we are right now, and it's probably about 70 degrees here in my shop, so we probably have maybe an hour before this will be ready for the next coating. But again, we wanna make sure it's completely dry so we don't accidentally pick some of that up with our next layer. 
Okay, we're ready for our second coat. Now, uh, it's important to know that uh, you, you can wear gloves with this, but uh, this is really not, there's nothing in this that uh, hazardous for, uh, like this isn't like an oil-based or a solvent-based paint. So um, this is really more for uh, mess than safety. So now we're, we're dry to the touch here, ready to apply our next, uh, our next layer. And again, important to remember that at this point, we're, this is where we're gonna apply our patina. So it's important to have everything ready to go and move with a purpose, because if you wait too long on this, it's gonna start drying and you're not gonna get a good reaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here and And I also want to put this on uh, relatively thick, uh, not so thick that we're getting runs and things like that, but we want to make sure we've got enough material on the surface here to get a good reaction with that patina. So if we skimp and get that too thin, we're going to get a very weak uh, uh, oxide forming. So make sure you've got enough of the metal coating to really get a good reaction there. And again, move with purpose because we're going to start applying our patina here pretty fast. So I want to make sure I get this all on each side and then move to the next side. And this is one of the areas where I really do like brush application just because if we're putting this on with a brush, uh, one of the advantages there is you can typically stipple it on or put it on fairly thick so that it dries a lot slower and that buys you a little bit more working time. So spray application especially is really fast drying. So with a spray application, you really got to be ready to go with your, uh, with your patina. And this, is, this foam roller is giving us just a very lightly textured surface. So um, that the more texture, the more surface area. And of course, that extra surface area is what really gets you a nice reaction. Okay, one last side and then we're ready for our patina. Okay, we're ready to move this out of the way and start with our patina application. Now, this is the uh, Tiffany green that we're using here. I'm gonna use the Tiffany green and original blue. And original blue is a really nice blue, but it is an indoor blue. This, if it's exposed to UV light like uh, sunlight, it'll shift more to green. So there's a different blue for outdoor use. There's the powder blue patina if you're doing something that's gonna be outside in direct sunlight. I'm holding my breath because I realize I don't have my respirator on. And now we're going to do the uh, Tiffany green. And a little, got a little sloppy there, so we'll...
Okay, now we put our patina on and you can already see that reaction happening there. It's pretty fast. So these are, these are good, uh, quick reacting patinas, especially, and we must have a decent amount of humidity in the air because we're, we're already starting to get a reaction. Um, always a good idea to wear a respirator with this. Obviously, these are acid patinas that you don't want to breathe. Um, work in a well-ventilated area so you can get these fumes away from you. These are all water-based, but again, they are acids. So uh, take the recommended precautions of wear a respirator, work in a well-ventilated area. Sometimes when I'm outside and I have a breeze blowing behind me, I don't bother with a respirator, but inside especially, make sure you uh, take the right precautions for that. Now, another lesser known precaution, uh, make sure when you're working with acid patinas and video equipment like I'm doing right now, that adds an extra layer of fun to this because these acids will destroy electronics really quick. So be aware of that if you're using any electronic or computer equipment around these, be really careful how you spray it because back in the old days when I would film some of the stuff, I'd get in really tight close up to get shots of this stuff and I ruined a few video cameras from that. So be aware of that. Remember, these oxidizers work really well on brass, which is what's inside most of your computer machines. So I'm going to step back and just let this go at this point. Now we're going to let time uh, work its magic here. And the nice thing about this process is at this point, nature takes over and completes our finish. But if for any reason we're not happy with the way it looks, we can just go right back on top of it with more metal coating. So I'll discuss that more uh, at the later in the video, but uh, right now we back off and let nature run its course. And this is where you wanna be really careful not to over apply your patinas. And I've already put on probably a little more than I should have, but you wanna take care that you're not over applying because that's where uh, if you apply too much, then you won't have enough oxygen on the surface to get a reaction. And then also if you put on a whole lot, you start to get a whole lot of runs. Now a little bit of that sometimes adds to the look of a piece but a lot of runs look sloppy, so be mindful of that. Okay, so this is about uh, 20 minutes later or so, and we have a really nice blue-green patina forming. Obviously, we didn't have to use both of these. I could just use just original blue or just the Tiffany green. Original blue will do just that. It's gonna oxidize uh, copper or any kind of copper alloy to blue whereas the Tiffany green gets more of a green, but I really like the two of them together. They get a nice kind of turquoise look, but we're getting a nice reaction. And this will take, I'm gonna give this another, uh, it'll probably take another hour for it to fully develop. And the, what's happening here is a two, two different things are happening. The acrylic is drying around that copper. And at the same time, we're getting a reaction from these patinas. So there's kind of a race where the, you want as much of a reaction to happen before that, uh, that acrylic locks in that metal powder. So this is a, another reason why you want to work in an area where things don't dry too fast so that it locks that in and turns off that reaction. Um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of times when you're getting a really poor patina reaction, it's because it's too hot and too dry because uh, the metal coating is drying too fast to get a really good reaction. Now, another little word about these uh, bottles of patina. These spray heads have a steel spring inside them, and that spring will oxidize and rust, and it will be destroyed. So be aware of that, that uh, these are good, depending on how you're using it, uh, for maybe a couple of weeks or so. If you're using it a lot, maybe not even that, but be aware of that, that if that spray head goes out, just transfer this to another bottle. and but uh, that spring will be destroyed. Most of you, if you're doing large projects, uh, you'll probably exhaust the whole bottle on a, on a large surface before the spring goes out. But uh, if it takes you a while to go through this, just know sometimes I go to uh, some of the dollar stores and just stock up on the little cheap spray bottles. Now, your spray pattern, obviously that dictates some of the quality of the finish. If you're dealing with a uh, some of these pump sprayers, especially the little pump sprayers, you get these kind of little blasts or these hot spots. Um, so to avoid that, that's where you want to really keep that bottle moving. And some of the uh, hardware stores will have 
uh, plant sprayers or atomizers that you can pump up and pressurize and they'll spray continuously. And those are ideal for this because then you don't have that hot spot or that little blast um, as you're spraying that bottle. So be aware of that because if you're doing this all out of a spray bottle and you're not careful, you can wind up with these hot spots of patina. Uh, in a little bit, I kind of got it there where you can see I did one pass with the blue and then came down here below and we have that, that spot in between. So be mindful of that so you don't wind up with these funky areas. And I'm not 100% happy with this, but I'm not gonna mess with it until the whole thing dries and who knows, it may dry just fine. But uh, this is a good example of, I over applied that just a little bit and you can see some of those uh, runs in that, which sometimes that complements the look, sometimes it doesn't, so be aware of that and uh, just be very careful. You're obviously not gonna see a reaction immediately, so don't keep spraying until you see a reaction or you can wind up with some all kinds of drips and over application. So we're gonna go ahead and let that sit and develop. And then uh, once this is completely developed, that's where we'll apply our sealer to lock all of that in. Okay, our uh, patina has developed and you'll see it's a nice, uh, kind of a powder blue, but kind of a turquoise uh, blue kind of look. And we still have some of the, the copper showing through. And if we want more of that, uh, one, one thing we could do is uh, seal this really good and then come back and dry brush some copper accents on it. Uh, but for this, this is exactly what I wanted. It's actually, uh, it wound up uh, being a lot more even than I expected, which is a pleasant surprise. So here is our finished patina. And just one, one place over here, which I think this is a good indicator of just application technique, where it looks like I, I hesitated with the roller a little bit there. So be aware of those things. And if we want, if we wanted to get rid of that, we can always go back and do a, an application over this uh, if necessary. But I like it how it is, so we're now ready to seal it. Now, if we leave it uh, like this, that oxide will get kind of chalky on the surface as it reacts, so we want to seal all of that in. So we're done with our patinas, but now we are ready for a sealer to lock all of this in. And when you first spray a sealer on, it's going to darken it a little bit and then it'll lighten back up as the solvents evaporate off. So. Um, it's typically there's not any change in the color or the the uh, uh, the darkness or the light uh, the quality of the patina. So uh, if you see it darken a little bit, don't worry. As it dries out, it's gonna the color is gonna return. Um, when in doubt, do a test piece because there are always weird surfaces that behave different than others. But typically, it will naturally darken a little bit when the sealer goes on, and then as that dries out. Uh, your color will return. Now, two options we have. Uh, this is clear guard. This is a clear sealer. And obviously you could use a clear sealer like just a regular uh, polyurethane or something like that. But the reason we're going with a lacquer like uh, the clear guard is this has both corrosion and UV resistance. And that's really important with something like this because uh, we don't, in addition to UV stability, we want that corrosion stability. So we, so we don't want uh, any of that oxide to spread. On this piece, it's not that big of a deal, but if we were doing something with rust, rust is like cancer that wants to go everywhere. So if you wanna make sure that your oxide stays in one area, it needs to be sealed with a corrosion resistant sealer. Now, matte, if we put this on, it's gonna look almost exactly like it does now. It's, it's going to give a very flat look and with no sheen to it. But uh, I'm, we're gonna go with the satin for this and the satin is gonna be, satin is more of a semi-gloss and I really like that look on a piece like this. Now it's important that uh, this is a solvent-based uh, lacquer, so be sure to wear a respirator when you're working with this. If you're outside, a lot of times you're, wor you're working outdoors and you have really good ventilation, it's not as big of an issue. But anytime I'm working with solvents, I'm getting a little long in the tooth now, so I try to make sure I'm taking care of my lungs and my brain, what little of it is left.
Okay, our piece is dry now and uh, we've got it fully sealed. I recommend on uh, with the clear guard at least a couple of coats of uh, sealer all over your piece, especially if you're dealing with rust. Again, rust is like cancer, so make sure that uh, if you're doing a rust patina and you don't want it to spread, make sure it's completely sealed. And it's important also to know that uh, the, the way this is working and the reason that's turning a different color and you're seeing more of the copper through that patina when it's sprayed with the lacquer is that lacquer, in order for it to work and really provide the protection it needs, it's actually penetrating that, uh, that oxide and going down to the copper coating underneath. And that's what's locking the, that all in and preserving that color and finish. So, so there we have our copper B application with Tiffany green and original blue patina. And then of course sealed to stabilize it and protect it with clear guard, clear lacquer. Now, uh, for those of you new to this process, I'm gonna link a couple of videos here at the end on spray application, as well as some different brush application techniques for metal coating. So be sure to check those out. And if you haven't already, be sure to uh, like and subscribe so you can be uh, updated on new video content that we post.